River. I'm not actually a farmer. I, um, I'm a horticulturalist originally, but I've trained myself in uh, whole farm planning, which is what this uh, is about. Um, earlier this year in May, with the help of South West Cashman Council, I went and sat a 10 day intensive in uh, Regrarian, it was the RAD course, Regrarian Advanced Design course. Regrarian is um, the combination of regenerative and agrarian, so it points to regenerative agriculture. Um, I'm going to be screaming through this. I actually sent Monica the wrong uh, PowerPoint, so there's 41 slides. In this <laughs> <laughs> um, right. So the Regrarian platform is designed by Darren Doherty. I don't know if you've heard of him, if not, he's well worth checking out. Uh, I was interested in his work for years before I got to study under him. He's, uh, take, over the last 25, 30 years, taken the best of conventional agriculture and all the new kind of progressive models that we see coming out in the last what, 20, 30 years, 40 years. Uh, holistic management, uh, key line design, permaculture, biodynamics, all of it. He's kind of road tested it for all of his working career, separated the wheat from the chaff, what actually works, what's hot air, and um, this is the platform he's come up with. So it's based on P.A. Yeoman's Key Line Scale of Permanence, which is a design template for when you go in into design or any human settlement, but it works very well with agriculture. Uh, how do you go through point by point in terms of preference, like uh, what, What's, what's, what holds priority? So the first thing you look at is the climate. That's the least manipulable uh, aspect within the human sphere. I mean, we're, we're having a bit of an impact on it now, but as far as like, you know, a farmer or a town or a village, it's very hard for us to get together and uh, make the climate change. So that's a priority when designing. Um, it also alludes to the mental climate of the client and the mental climate of the culture of the area and the legal climate, what you can and cannot do, bylaws, statutes, zoning, things like that. Geography is the next most permanent aspect of, of uh, agriculture. You, we do have big yellow machines and diesels. We can go in and, and do earthworks and move things around, but it's, it's relatively very expensive and hard to do. And, and down with, on through, whoops, is there a back? Uh, water, access, which means access is roads, uh, paths, any, any kind of access. Forestry is anything to do with a tree on a farm, whether it's timber forestry, fruit production, wind breaks, riparian buffers, all of the rest, carbon farming. Um, buildings, um, there's you know, the whole gamut of solar passive design, uh, water harvesting on the roof, rainwater systems and including um, a lot of uh, portable buildings, portable farm buildings are all the rage in the progressive agriculture of the US at the moment. There's one or two slides, I hope I can get there and show you. Um, fencing, you know, whenever this part of the world was divided up 100 or more years ago, usually it, it was quite arbitrary, the way they cut things up, and the closest thing you'd get to an actual kind of natural divide would be a river. And usually, because fencing was so expensive back then in time and, and physical resources, they'd pick the shortest distance between two uh, paths, uh, the shortest path between two points to make it uh, less expensive. We don't have to do that now. We can use the landscape itself to offer us the design template. We look at how the topography forms, you know, the ridges, the valleys, the waterways, and we uh, fence accordingly. Um, and of course now there's with the likes of uh, Kiwi Tech out of New Zealand, electric fencing, like one strand portable electric fencing, incredible designs, check it out if you have it, 90 cents per metre it, it costs to put in. Soils, very important. It's not down here because it's not important, it's just down there because it's so easy to destroy or create. It's relatively impermanent. Um, I could go on and on and on about soils, I'm sure you'd appreciate it. <laughs> uh, economy slash marketing. Uh, in the days, like now we have with Facebook, internet, social media, uh, I'm not sure what they're called, but um, portable um, FPOS machines for you know, on-site purchasing. The game has completely changed. You don't need to pay a PR firm or a marketing firm thousands and thousands of dollars. All you need to do is 
have some idea of the product, some idea of the demographic and psychographic of the area or your, your um, potential market, and just run with it. And energy, all things to do with energy, solar passive, uh, sorry, uh, solar panels, but also photosynthesis, all the ways in which we capture and store energy. Now I'm going to fly through this. Um, just to show you some of the photos. So these are some of the um, different design templates that Darren or the agrarians movement in the middle uh, takes from. We've got key line design, permaculture, the transition network, holistic management, micro integration, we'll work with Paul Stamets, uh, the mycologist in the US, carbon farming, um, three of which are from Australia. There's a lot of influence in progressive and you know, regenerative farming coming from Australia. Um, nowadays with the likes of RTK photogrammetry and, and topographical mapping, we can get contour maps down to you know, the millimetre if we so choose, and that technology is becoming more and more available and cheaper all the time to uh, assist us in really, really um, high quality uh, design. Um, access. Access is uh, in a world where what we're trying to do with pasture is to ever increase the soil content of the carbon content of the soil, the life of the soil, the runoff coefficiency of soil becomes, well, it can, with healthy enough soil, it can go down to zero. That means your dams that are designed in catchment areas become, you know, they barely fill in a wet season. That's where you, the design of your roads becomes very important. They become your, your catchment. They're designed in such a way that uh, within the landscape, they fill, fill your dams because their runoff coefficient is extremely high. It's depending on the surface, the type of the roads, it's, it can be up to like 80, 85, 90%. Um, this is a handscape, not a landscape. <laughs> but it, um, it demonstrates the nature of topography. The primary ridges, the main ridges, the valleys, uh, very, very important when, uh, very important to understand when you're designing with the Regrarians platform. That's an uh, image of a water harvesting road. It's not on contour, it's on key line, which is, describes just off contour, slightly to maybe one, one in one to two hundred, one to three hundred uh, fall towards the point of catchment. So all of that uphill catchment is hitting that road and very, very gently moving its way towards the dam. There it is again. This road is tilting in this way. There's a, a drain here. Forestry. So everything from, again, uh, timber, carbon forestry, um, Restoration agriculture. This is a chap in the States called Mark Shepherd who's done amazing work with um, silver pasture on key line design. Buildings, here we are. These are, these are the kind of portable buildings that are kind of slowly catching on in the States at the moment. Uh, there's co-ops amongst farmers where they will buy collectively, they'll buy um, like stockyards or abattoirs and move them around from place to place. Um, not only that, but on your own farm you can have uh, you can have portable dairies, any portable building, so you don't get the usual camping in certain areas, you don't get the trails and uh, uh, erosion that uh, stock can create from moving from place to place on a regular basis. Um, this is the kind of, this is um, Polyface Farm, I believe. Uh, Bear, uh, this is Taranaki Farm in Victoria. Uh, these um, follow the leader type uh, grazing techniques. Uh, Temple Brandon, she's done a lot of amazing work with, uh, with uh, stock and animals and the way that they 
relate to um, stockyards, buildings in general, uh, portable and on-site, on-farm abattoirs. So you know, the, it's just a brief, it's just a brief stroll for the animal on its home site into the abattoir. It's like one bad day of its life instead of being put on a truck. You know, driven to somewhere completely different that's never, never been Still before. ends up dead. Yeah. Still ends up dead. Well, yeah, but, you know, the, the amount of suffering in between is... It doesn't know that. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, this is an example of... Uh, fencing. Subdivide your landscape by following the lines of other more permanent elements. Use the most flexible infrastructure to take advantage of changing opportunities for yield. So instead of instead of these arbitrary land divisions based on God knows what happened when the land was divided up, you use using the ridges and valley lines as the primary land units. Excuse me to uh, inform your design decisions as to what where what's going to create your paddock. Is it going to be just a make-believe line in the sand that you're going to fence, or are you going to use the landscape itself to inform that design decision? Yeah, like once upon a time it took generations upon generations of effort to create fencing, whereas now we've got single-strand electric wire, like I said at the moment, 90 cents a metre, uh, that can hold back a whole herd. Like our grandparents would have killed for something like this. Soils, easily destroyed and fortunately easily created. Soils are the foundation of life. Management is critical to the development and maintenance of soils. Enhance the protection of your soils by considering other elements, particularly water, forestry and fencing. Um, we know now with the likes of holistic management and uh, the proper stock rotational management uh, systems that soil can be created and quite quickly compared to what we thought it was uh, a generation ago. Um, and it's, the, it's, it's, it's quickly becoming recognised as one of the world's most important resources. Without soil there's not much we can do. Uh, Dr. Elaine Ingham, uh, her work is drawn heavily upon in the agrarian movement. Marketing. It has never been easier to analyse or access markets. Our difficulty remains in the terms of trade, particularly with regards to clients, although we persist in continuing to be enterprising, adaptable and difficult to quell. Like the revolution is occurring, the, the, the tables are totally turning in terms of who has the control with marketing. Like I said before, you, you only need a, you need a laptop and a Facebook um, account and you can reach thousands of people a day. And it's just a matter of, you know, every day, maybe you, you snap an interesting picture, you see something on your property, you know, well, look, this is happening. And you post it online. It's a little thing to keep people aware constantly of what you're doing and the yeah, positive impacts you can have. There you go, this is an example of these portable FPOS gadgets that you can actually plug into your uh, smartphones. I don't know if anyone's seen them, but you get an account with them, you just snap them into your smartphone and you can read a card. You link that up to a PayPal account, you know, coupled with social, social uh, networks and marketing and you know, it's a total game changer. Um, 42 seconds. Does anyone have any question? Yeah. <laughs> it's fantastic. That's absolutely like, stunning. So there, there's, there's so much to this, it's really hard to fit into 10 minutes because this, this is encyclopedic. So I'm going to be hanging around, so if anyone wants to come and have a chat, please feel free. Just a question on uh, productivity, yes. which is, you know, farmers are always concerned about productivity. Mm -hmm. How does the productivity of this kind of system stack up against what would be known as traditional methods? Uh, well, Darren is very, very well versed and conversant in the, you know, the need of actually obtaining a yield. You yeah. know, I mean, that's the difference between him and a lot of other. You know, I'm a student of permaculture, and I take a lot from it. But a lot of that movement has been uh, 
pretty airy-fairy in lots of ways. Like, they, they don't actually focus on the realities of having to produce a yield. Exactly. Um, this, this does work. It's, uh, in, in lots of cases, it's multiple yields. You know, whereas you were once just a, a beef farmer, you might be doing a whole different gamut of things now. You know, you're running your beef stock and then afterwards you're bringing your egg layers through and then you, you're grazing mushrooms on, on saw logs and all sorts of things. What well, they used to call it around a mixed farm, a bit of everything. Yeah. Bernie? Uh, Joel, uh, I think it was our first celebration four years ago, we had Peter Andrews come and talk to us right. about natural secret farming. Yeah. Was that part of what you learned about? Um, Darren and the likes of us who study such things, we draw from uh, Peter Andrews' work. Again, personally, I don't, I don't subscribe to his whole picture, but there are certainly aspects of, of, of natural sequence farming that I think he's nailed, um, especially where he points out the, how unique Australian hydrology is compared to like you know, Northern Europe or Western Europe, where we, we draw our cultural um, you know, templates from. You know, we're, we, we've taken Western European farming and insisted we're on a place like Australia, which is completely different. Now, the, the, as I understand it, um, uh, the agrarian model began in America. No, no, not oh. Australia. Australia? Yeah. Okay. So, in your opinion, does this work everywhere in Western Australia, or is it, it, does it work best in certain types of areas? I think it works everywhere, regardless of the landscape or climate. However, um, Darren himself is born and raised in and has a kind of penchant for the Mediterranean climates of the world like ours. Like it's very, very applicable. Okay, good. Last question, yes. I know, I just wanted to make a comment to that. So oh. we're oh. Jeff from Southampton and Homestead. Hey, mate. Michelle. Yeah. So we're, we're a polyface style model. A what? We're a polyface style model, so... You can say that in English. <laughs> polyface. So Joel mentioned... Many. So Byron mentioned that um, Joel Sullivan's fun. Farming style in the States is a, is, a, is, a, is a practical example of the type of time we're talking about. Right. So at the moment, we're raising pasture poultry, eggs, beef, sheep, um, all on the run one system, and we're harvesting our poultry on the farm. So, it's a mixed system. 120 acres. Yeah, good. Um, so, there's a million questions, and I'm running out of time. I just wanted to make a point though. Your question to um, Byron was asking whether um, it was. Uh, increased productivity. Oh, the question no, I, should be profitability. This is what we need to focus on. Sure. Profitability. Okay. Profitability. <laughs> well, yes, very <laughs> profitable, and also ecologically regenerative in the, in at the same time, and that's the big difference here. Yep. Okay. I'm going to leave it there. Uh, Byron's going to be with us for a while, and and certainly I think we should plug some some electrodes into his brain and suck some of this stuff out because it's seriously good.